So at this point, I've got this uh, home screen. I've got this content. Uh, I want to set up um, an interesting looking nav bar, a navigation element. I have a simple button that takes me to page two, second screen, but with jQuery Mobile, we can create these nav bars very easily. It needs a bit of a setup, but then you'll see how it should make sense and how it works. So I want to have buttons up in my header. Up in my header, like on many apps, I see up on the header I've got navigation buttons. So let's go back to, again, your lines do not have to line up like mine, but I'm on line 17-ish header, where my header starts. I've got H1. Now, little side note here, H1 is the very first heading that I have in my whole section. And you usually want to have that H1 in the header, because the header is also the very first thing you see. I had us do H4 down on the footer. And that's what I would recommend. The very last thing you would see on the screen, the footer, have the fourth heading. This goes up to H6, when you hardly use H6. So then we can have H2 and 3 in the main article area. I haven't added those in here, but if you want other headings to divide up the content in the article, it's heading 2 and 3. And usually when you work with HTML, you only want one example of H1 in your project. It's okay for us here, because these H1s are separated via sections. So I've got my page 1 section with its H1, and I've got my page 2 section with its H1. That is valid. If it was one HTML file with no divisions and sections, it would not be very good to reuse heading one more than one time. But it's okay with multiple sections. So to the header, I also want to create a um, navigation element. I want the, the text, you know, the name of the project or whatever, visible first, and then after that I want navigation. So line 19, we have a tag called nav, N-A-V, nav, navigation. This is one of these that is built in, but again, it doesn't have the actual meaning yet <coughs> of it being a nav bar, navigation bar. So it needs a data role, nav bar. So some of them are named very consistently, easy to remember. Footer is data role footer. Some of them are a little different. Nav is data role nav bar. And then there's one very different. Article, role, and class. But what this is saying is we're going to divide up whatever content is inside of here with the other header content. And I also want to make it look a certain way. That's where the uh, CSS will kick in. So a nav bar nowadays is often set up as an unordered list of bullet points. So deep down, a collection of links is bullet points. Bullet points is set up with UL, which is unordered list bullet points. So without the data role of nav bar, this would look like bullet points. But with the data role of navbar, it's going to look like a nice horizontal navbar with equal spacing and icons and all this great stuff. Each bullet point is a list item, li. Let's say we've got a home, home screen. Let's say we've got an about screen. We've got a contact screen. I'm setting up a nav bar made of bullet points, home about contact bullet points, which will be links to different screens. If you check this in the browser, it's not quite there yet, but it's starting to divide up this content from the other content in the header a little bit more code and then it will be more complete. But this, the point of this is, again, write less, do more. If I wanted to do what this is going to do very easily, I'd have to write lots of lines of CSS to properly set it up. 
So what it looks like at this point, it's putting it all on the same line. It's separating it out a little bit. These will be clickable in a moment. Just to see if I didn't have navbar, it would be bullet points. So it's plain old bullet points without the upgrade of jQuery Mobile. With the jQuery Mobile upgrade, it's starting to get there. <clears throat> to complete it, these bullet points should be linked to the right screen. Links, a tag, href, pound. Pretty much always with jQuery Mobile, these are going to be linked to your various screens with a pound sign, and the pound sign is the ID of the screen. At the moment, my home screen is page one. <coughs> I need an A tag for about, href, pound, page two. You might see where I'm getting at for contact. A tag, href, pound, page 3, which actually doesn't exist. So if I try to click it, it might go to a broken link. But the idea is these are plain old links that have been upgraded with the navbar data role. And if you run it, you will see how these have been so much more improved. Okay, so let me let me run that. If I check it on the browser, now I have actual kind of looking like buttons, and they're separated and centered, and they have rollovers. It would be really cool if I can somehow put icons in those buttons. A href data dash uh, data dash icon home. dash icon info data dash icon is it mail or email? I always forget. It's mail. So I can add these elements These attributes, these were plain old links we saw down here originally, um, our data role of button. This is slightly different, but to that data role of button, we then added icons and transitions and such. It's valid here as well. A tag, we didn't have to add data role button because it knows that these are going to be navbar buttons because it's inside of a nav with data role of navbar. So I've added the data icons, and here's some examples. Home icon, info icon, mail icon, and then these apply these cool little icons to the buttons. If I click on About, again it reminds me that the About screen looks really bad. I haven't done anything with it. The contact screen either will tell you an error or do nothing, because there's no third page yet. And this home screen is the home screen. can add a data transition to these. Flip. Here's where copy and paste will really help. So if you wrote it properly one time, copy and paste it. Yes, of course you could put 
that the animation from this screen to that screen is a flip, and this one is a slide, and then this one is a slide up. Yeah, you can make every single transition different, but you shouldn't. We'll have a discussion on user experience, UX design, a little later. Uh, but when we learn this stuff, oftentimes we go overboard. When we learn how to add later on cool fonts to our project, people are going to pick five fonts to the project. When we figure out how to add colors and such, people are going to put all of these weird colors. When I talk about you can put all of these different types of animations, people will put every animation. We have to have a discussion later on about user experience. That's not good to put every single kind of animation. It confuses the user. One kind of animation has a certain meaning going from screen to screen. Another kind has a meaning that you get a pop-up or extra information. So you could put all these three different types, but it's really much better just to have one type of animation conceptually. Here's one I haven't shown yet. Flow. This one's really interesting. Very extravagant. Check out the flow animation. Data transition flow, what that one does is it kind of like flicks the screen out of the way. So if you spell transition right, transition. See that? Copy and paste mistakes, and you get more mistakes. When you go from screen to screen, it like flicks it out of the way. Really cool, really fun, nice and quick animation. No lag. And um, we have these other ones. We have one called Turn. It's like the page turns like in a book. The turn. Looks like a turn. There's not a lot of content to look at, so the second screen doesn't look that good. When you turn it, it turns. I personally like Flip. I think it's visually interesting enough, but not so extravagant that it confuses people. If you don't, if you don't even put a transition, the default is Fade. You could put Fade if you want. That's a waste of time, though because fade is the default. There it is, fade and fade. So any one you like. Flip is fine. As we learn this, this is just kind of learning the pieces of the puzzle. It's like I'm giving you a box. Here's the jQuery mobile puzzle box. Or Lego is actually a better analogy. Here's the jQuery mobile Lego box you put together something. Here's a little boat, here's a dragon, here's a Death Star, you know, whatever. You put together your Lego pieces, your Lego project based on the Lego pieces. That's what jQuery Mobile is. Um, that's what we're learning for the moment, and we'll look at other things. But we're also looking at the classes, especially when we talk about JavaScript and all of that. We're learning what we need to do with JavaScript. What kind of JavaScript do I need to write to take a photo with the device's camera? What JavaScript do I need to write to make the phone vibrate? So we'll learn all of that. In addition, also subconsciously, perhaps, you're also learning a sort of style of, uh, of programming. This is the one that, depending on where or how or with who you learn, you pick up a style of programming. This is the thing about, well, how many tabs, how many spaces, capitalization of your terms, and all of that. And if you've learned in other classes another way, continue to do your style of programming that way. But in this class, obviously, I'm teaching the style that I know that I was taught. So what I'm getting at is like this. These bullet points, we, if, if it worked, it works just fine. But what I like to do, what I've uh, learned, uh, is, you know, your code, where your code working is one thing, but also the way your code looks is another thing that you can think about if it's valuable to you. What I'm getting at is this. I would personally do this. What did I do? Something totally meaningless. But I lined up these data icons. 
and then these line up here nice as well. This is completely aesthetic, worthless to the operation of the app, and actually takes up a couple of extra bytes of space, technically. But this is one of the things that I like to do, and when I was uh, learning this on various classes and tutorials and such, nice-looking code is part of good programming, is one philosophy. So this worked a moment ago, but if I line some of these things up, and especially when we create variables and functions, and it's much more complex, and you've got to look at hundreds of lines of code and figure out your mistakes, if you do take a moment to kind of set yourself up aesthetically, it might help you hunt out those mistakes. So in my case, all I did was I pressed a few spaces. <coughs> you can also do tabs. But a few spaces to line these up completely extra, unnecessary. It technically takes up slightly more bytes. And I'm always saving, talking about saving your bytes, so I am contradicting myself. But visually, you know, this lines up nice, that lines up, that lines up. And then when I'm looking through my code, scanning it, I hopefully can kind of understand my code a little better. It's up to you to decide how obsessive you want to be about it, because some of these lines you know, I press the tab to line these all up, but then maybe that's too much of a space. Well, you know, if I put it back like how it was a moment ago, what I showed a moment ago, that one space right there is sort of my anchor for me to add a couple of manual spaces instead of tabs. So, again, this is just part of that style, visual aspect of the code, which may or may not be valuable to you. I often do it in the classes, and I know that I do it on my own code. You know, I wouldn't do it like this, obviously. Now, this is crazy right here. I wouldn't do that because section tag is very conceptually different than header tag. These are three list items, three bullet points. Conceptually, they're one kind of unit. So that's when I, wa I would want to line these up. I wouldn't line that up because it's conceptually different things. So does that work so far? You've got those three links at the top. This simple uh, page two that we've neglected for a while, down at the bottom, we could use it as a sort of template. If we were going to create multiple screens, which we will later, yes, each of those screens does need the section and the article and the header and all of that. That is a downside of this, that you need to have all your sections fully defined. One way to help you with that is to create a section as a sort of a template that is all fully defined that you can copy and paste and then just fill in the details. So I'm going to repurpose page two. If you already fixed it, that's fine. You'll have to retype it. This section of page two, I'm going to repurpose it to have an idea, an ID of template. I'm purposely putting it all caps because I know I want to change that eventually. Every section needs a unique ID. If I put it cap caps like that, hopefully I will notice it when I'm browsing my code that that should be different. And what I'm going to do with this template is create the very simple skeleton of a complete section. A complete section has a header, an article, a footer, and then the details, data role, header, article, role, main, class, UI-content, footer, data role, footer. That's possibly enough from what I need as a template to make more pages. 
but maybe that nav bar is important that I need to have on every screen because that nav bar needs to be set up on every screen. So perhaps more complete H1, top, put it all in caps to remind myself that should be changed at some point. Nav. with a data role of nav bar on ordered list a couple of example bullet points or links page 1 page 2 A tags. You can uh, possibly copy them and paste a little bit from the top or practice the longhand. In the article. H2, it's in like main, down in the footer, H4, bottom, so this could be my template section. This purpose is I can copy and paste that five times. And I've already got a starting point of a complete section with a data role that I need to fill an ID with a header, with an article, with a footer, etc. Give you a moment to type that up, but conceptually, do you see that that is this is a way to to try to mitigate that issue that yes, every section does need the complete data roles, blah blah blah. This is a possible way to mitigate that. If you've got a template that you can just reuse quickly, starting a new screen, we can use this as a copy and paste in a moment. be a good idea also uh, on the footer data position fixed Remember we have to do that so that we we make sure that the footer is fixed to the bottom I didn't mention it yet but it's also a good idea to have data position for your header technically without that your header could scroll away you've got top content on the top and the bottom content in the middle the article if you've got enough content where a person has to scroll away Without data position fixed to the header, the header will also scroll away. So we didn't do it a, a little while ago, but for completeness of this of this uh, template file, it might be useful to put it there. So in a moment, we're going to use this template section to create those two other screens. We have that first screen, home screen. What did we create? We created home screen, 
about screen contact. Well, we created the links up on the navbar home button, um, about button, contact button. If you've got this section set up completely, we can then copy and paste. I like to keep this section at the end of my code. You know, I've got my JavaScript stuff here. This is the end of the code. Up there was the end of the section of home. I want to copy and paste this a couple of times before this final piece. Before I do that, this is when it's also useful to write comments the start of the section, page one, is there, and the end of section, page one, is there. So zoomed out, I would say it's useful to say, like here, start home section, and after that, end home section so now those comments that are there when I'm looking at my code in totality um, because the comment is a different color than everything else I, I notice it that that section when I'm far down here that section really needs the end of my home section code Next line I could then do start about section and about section. And in between, I'm going to put that template code that I copied. the code we worked on a moment ago is still up there. It's been uh, commented there that it starts and ends. I started new comments here. And the, my template code is still there. If you wrote that template completely, I copied it, I pasted it, I've got a brand new screen where I need to set the ID and the details. That ID could be anything, of course. And on my home screen, I called the first section page one, which is not a good name. You're going to forget what's page one, what's page three, what's page 20. It's not a good name. These IDs should represent what the actual screen is. So your home screen ID should really be home. Then this brand new section would be a good name for this brand new section. I think I heard someone say about. Good. Yes. I'll do that one moment. Let me just say conceptually what we're doing here. So that home screen, it's got an ID of home. That uh, section has an ID of about because all of these are these links here. So this page one, pound home, pound about, pound contact. So all of these IDs should have meaningful. All of these IDs should be set to something meaningful. Yeah, a moment ago these were generically page one, two, three. That's not good. These should be home, about, contact because then this, this template file, it's going to have a section of an ID with a meaningful name. That one's still called template down there, which is an exact copy here. I haven't changed it. That template has that exact <coughs> content and an ID of template because I need to know to remind myself to change that to something else.
So I'm not going to go in through uh, all of this and fill it in just yet. This actually, what, what we're working here is going to be our first uh, introduction to jQuery Mobile, and we're going to use it definitely more complete on Thursday. I'm just using the purpose of this file as, a, as an introduction. We'll look at a couple more aspects of jQuery Mobile, like widgets and such in a moment. Conceptually, this is this is um, where you you'll need to visit the jQuery Mobile website to see more details. But it should be coming together. These are the pieces that we've got sections and headers, and it needs a unique ID and various data roles of things. So there's there's an about section, but there's nothing really that marks it as about. You can make it say about right there. And I've got this first screen. This about button goes to the about page. It's still all generic. There's no contact screen. I haven't made a screen. This go to second screen now is broken because there is no more page two. That's fine. We should be able to figure that out. But these buttons here are linking to sections with unique IDs. So if you don't have it all typed in, don't worry, I'll put the code in the folder in a little moment uh, at the end of the day. Um, I'll just give you 30 more seconds and we'll go on. Let's save this and let's go online to look at a couple of things. Go to your web browser and first we'll do this. Let's go to Wikipedia. <coughs> so if you haven't heard about it by now, wikipedia.org is the online encyclopedia full of a variety of articles in multiple languages. There's nearly five and a half million articles in the English version, over one million in Japanese, 1.4 in Russian, etc. At the bottom here, let's search jQuery Mobile. Spell it right, of course. Mobile. jQuery Mobile. You should see an article, jQuery Mobile. Now, obviously, I'm not going to read this article for you, but uh, jQuery is a touch optimized web framework, more specifically, a JavaScript library, currently being developed by the jQuery project team. The development focuses on creating a framework compatible with a wide variety of smartphones and tablets, etc. This framework is compatible with other mobile app frameworks, such as PhoneGap, Worklight, and more. So it just goes on to tell you uh, what are the features of it. You can read that on your own, sample usage, and then there's a basic example. So what we were working with here, with the concepts of data roles, we haven't seen data theme yet, we'll get back to it in a moment, position, transition, icon. So what we did right now was a variation of what's here on the Wikipedia article setting up our code to connect to uh, the libraries, writing some basic stuff. This is, this is an example here. Actually, I've contributed to this article, and I wrote this right here. So everyone that goes to the, to the jQuery mobile article is looking at this example that I helped create. Um, so this is a quick introduction. This is what we did in class right now is actually better than the example here. We added more stuff like the nav bar. But one thing that the article is mentioning is, you know, we have all of these various 
uh, data roles. It doesn't mention every single one because we can get it from the jQuery website. One of them is a data theme. We haven't done this one yet. Specifies which design theme to use for elements within a container. It can be set to A or B. The default is A. If you managed to create, you know, your page 2, let's add a different theme to it. I've got my About section, my Home section. In your second screen, <coughs> Section, Data Role, ID. Again, IDs, I like to keep them as the last element. So I want to add Before ID, Data Theme, B. I'm adding this to the section. We have this system of themes, of colors and design. Data theme A is the default. Add a data theme B to your second screen, save it and run it, and see what you get. Data theme B activates the alternate theme. Data theme A is the plain uh, default gray. Data theme B is a cool, dark theme, different design. Back on page one. We have an ability that we'll see later on that we can set these other themes. C, for example, and it goes all the way up to Z. Z. Those don't do anything. A and B are the only ones that are active at the moment. Later on we will see, well, I want to set up my colors. Yellow at the top with a red drop shadow, you know, all my design. These are going to be your own custom themes that we'll look at later. We can store up to data theme Z. We can store up to 26 variations of color themes for our app and load them up as necessary. You can attach this data theme to many elements. Here, I added it to the parent element of section, and it basically trickled down everywhere. But for example, I could add a data theme B to the whole screen, and then if I set up data theme J on the nav bar, nav bar data role, and then data theme J, the nav bar would become a different design, a different color. That's not built in at the moment, so any other letter besides A and B won't do anything. But later we'll see that we can create our own themes. Later on we'll see that we can change the fonts and those icons, and we can definitely do customization. At the moment we're, we're still, you know, the tip of the iceberg of what jQuery Mobile can do. But the whole point, stepping back, the whole point of what jQuery is, if you read the article, it's a way basically to create interfaces. It's one way. There's many other uh, projects out there to create interfaces. Another one that I'm looking at that I'm liking a lot is called Onsen, O-N-S-E-N. -E That's another way to create interfaces, buttons quickly. Instead of me having to program the drop shadows and write all of that code and the widths and calculate all of that stuff. There are frameworks that people are creating to help you do it quickly. Some people feel, well, that's cheating. I want to do it by hand. Well, great. You probably also want to build your car every day, right, to drive to work. <laughs> yeah, some people do, and that's fine. It's all good. But if you need to do a project quickly, make an app quickly, these various frameworks that are out there get you started very quickly. Continuing the article here, again, it talks about themes and so forth. It's compatible with all of these devices, iPhones, uh, Android devices, and all of that. The various history. This has been around since 2010. It's been evolving. Um, this is the latest version, and 1.5 is coming out, and all of that. And here's other competitors and such, or other, uh, other examples. Um, and all of that. 
you can read that article and we'll look at another web resource here. We'll take a break in a moment. Um, let's go straight to the horse's mouth. Let's go to the original website. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. <coughs> Here's the official home page of jQuery Mobile. So jQuery Mobile is a framework, and it's basically totally free. You don't owe royalties, or you don't even have to give credit, I guess. Uh, it's a project that you can use in any type of app, really, for iPhones, Android, whatever, to create an interface. This, you know, if you think it's cheating, this still doesn't do anything. This doesn't this doesn't create a login screen for you, this doesn't set up user authentication, this doesn't save stuff to a database, it's just for the interface so that it looks nice and consistent on a variety of devices. The heavy lifting of it doing something, that's still going to be JavaScript. That's still going to be hardcore, 500 lines, 1,000 lines of programming. But here, with jQuery Mobile, with the right attributes and such. We can quickly create interfaces, pop-up windows, messages, side panels, all that good stuff, so that our app can actually do something. You use this site in a couple of ways. You either go to the API documentation, which is the really high-level nerdy way to read the docs, we'll look at it later, or for the moment let's look at the demos. Go to demos. We'll look at the 145 version. We don't have to bother with those old versions. We're not using them. We're using jQuery 145. And the way this is set up is the site itself, it uses jQuery Mobile. This side panel is built in jQuery Mobile, and these transitions and all of that is in jQuery Mobile. So you can have a, a wide screen design like that, or you can have a, a small screen like that, and it'll look nice on a small screen as well. This is already also built in responsive web design, meaning that our project changes and responds to the size of the monitor. Doing this traditionally, classically, you have to write media queries and a bunch of code <coughs> to set breakpoints so that the project looks good on multiple devices. This is basically built into jQuery Mobile. Looks good on a big screen, looks good on a small screen. If we're interested here, let's look at the icons that are built in. In the CSS Framework section, you'll see icons. Click on that. A set of built-in jQuery mobile icons can be applied to buttons, collapsible elements, list views, etc. There's an SVG and a ping image for each icon. By default, the SVG that looks great on both standard definition and high def screens are used. So those icons that are built in are already designed in a way that they will grow and shrink and look good on just about any device. And the icons are all listed right here in exactly what they are. So the jQuery mobile demo site will tell you here's what pieces of the puzzle you have. They're all right there, the Legos. And then how to use them, there will be explanations. And then oftentimes there will be a little button that says, you know, view the code view the source. And basically here, okay, I want to use, I want to delete my database. Well, I'm going to have an icon here, you know, kind of a warning alert icon to warn you that you're about to delete the database. So these are all the ones built in. Question? Are you still recording? I just saw it flash up on the screen. I was checking and it's still oh. recording. Yes, test, test, one, two, three. Yep. So, if I want to down arrow, I just use data icon equals arrow dash D. I have a couple different arrows. There's one called a carrot, that kind of arrow. Not carrot, but carrot. Uh, what else? Okay, I need to add a, a, a calendar. I need to pull up information in my app about the event that's happening next month. Here's an icon that's built in that I can simply do data icon equals calendar. I have a calendar. If I want a very specifically designed calendar, you scroll down and it'll tell you here how to set up your own custom icon. There's no skull icon built in. It shows you that you have to set up in HTML, you have to do something. And in CSS, you have to do something. Basically, you point it to your own graphic in CSS and you write the HTML. So you can have your own custom icons. You have 50 built in that are very useful. 
I need a search icon. I don't have to design a, a search icon. I can use the classic one. Video icon and so forth. Or you can design your own. We didn't talk about specifying is the icon at the top, left, right, whatever. It put the icon automatically at the top. Well, if we use data icon POS, which stands for something else, icon position, data icon position, we can put it to the left, to the right, top, bottom. What if I only want an icon, not the text as well? I can set data icon pos, data icon position, I can set it to no text, and I'll get only the icon shadows and colors, removing the disk, etc. So lots of information on the icons that are built in, how to make your own. And then if you also see on the left side, if you look at transitions, all those animations that we talked about, they're, they're explained in there, all the possibilities, there's not that many. And then examples, fade, pop, we didn't do pop yet. How does it look like on a full page? You know, a, a flip on a full page? It's a big old flip. If we do it on a pop-up, kind of an animation like that. Slide up, slide down. Get that slide up. And it automatically goes in the opposite direction no extra programming. It knows that if you return in history, it'll just do it the opposite direction. So data transition equals pop, and you get the pop-up effect. Um, later on it talks about your own custom transitions, which is kinda kinda hard, but there is a way for you to um, do your own transitions. It also talks about fallbacks. If an older web browser doesn't understand it, it'll just do a basic kind of animation. Here it says, well, if you're dealing with Android 2.x or lower, then you get a basic animation. Newer, anima newer Android phones handle it better and all of that. But Android 2.0, that's like you know seven years old. You're probably not working with older devices like that. But all of this is kind of built in. You just need to know how to use it and how to put it together. We'll take a break, and then we'll look at some other examples of interesting things through jQuery Mobile, and then we'll, we'll wind down. It's 8.02. Take a break until 8.12. We'll go on.